Hey everyone, uh, it is now episode 4 of our Java game development tutorial series. If you remember last time, uh, we made our window um, able to be made full screen, which is awesome. So, today we're going to go ahead and set up our little rendering loop for the game. Um, after our call to frame.setVisibleTrue, we're going to go ahead and call a method I'm going to call uh, start rendering. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and create that method. Private static void start rendering. And we're going to put inside of it, we're going to say thread thread equals new thread. And we're going to treat, you know, type this like it's a function, kind of. A thread, you know, two parentheses, and then our brackets here, but put a parenthesis, uh, a semicolon after the last bracket. And we're going to say thread dot set name it's not necessary but I like to set the names of my threads we're gonna call this rendering thread and thread dot start that is necessary or else this will never run inside of this we're gonna say public void run that will automatically be called whenever we uh, call thread dot start right here um, but we're putting all this in a new thread so we can continue you know without it so here we call render dot init it goes through renderer.init, it creates this thread, which has a little loop inside it, it starts the thread, and then it returns back to here, where it left off. Um, and this will just keep running in a loop. We can do other stuff, but this thread will keep running in a loop, uh, because we will put it inside of a while loop. We'll say while, for now we'll just say while true. You should actually not put a literal in here, you should put a variable. Um, so you can set it to be false later on, and then the thread will end the way it's supposed to. But this is probably going to keep going until we quit the game anyway, so uh, for now we'll just say while true. Uh, while true, well, actually, before we get to while true, there are a couple things we need to do first. Graphics configuration vc equals... Uh, canvas dot get graphics configuration and I'm gonna go ahead and import that um, volatile image uh, V image equals uh, VC wait why did I say VC graphics configuration VC that doesn't make sense I meant GC and so graphics and uh, volatile image V image equals GC dot create compatible volatile image um, and it's going to take two parameters um, a width and a height that we want this image to be that's going to be game width and game height right here because this is what we're going to draw all of our game graphics to so we want it to be the width and the height of the game not the final game width and game height you know remember with capitals and a uh, underscore. I'm going to import volatile image now. Um, so game width and game height for the size of this image. That's all great and everything. Now here at the beginning we need to say, uh, at the beginning of our loop, so this happens every time we loop, we need to say if uh, vimage dot validate using graphics configuration which we got here, so gc is equal to vimage uh, no, sorry. Volatile image dot image incompatible. What this does is volatile images. The reason why we're using a volatile image is because it's hardware accelerated. Uh, it'll make our graphics much faster. But it's volatile because it could its contents could suddenly disappear at any moment. Um, I'm not sure why that is, but we need to deal with that if it does happen. So if the volatile image, we, we run a, a method called validate, and it takes a graphics configuration, uh, and if it finds that the image is no longer compatible, um, what we need to do is create the image again. So you could easily just take this bit right here and paste it in there, because all it basically is doing is creating the image all over again. Um, so, next thing we're going to need Whenever we do our rendering, we're going to need some graphics uh, or gra a graphics object, and we're going to draw everything to this image, the volatile image, 
and then we're going to draw the volatile image to the screen. And what this is going to do is, since our volatile image is smaller than the screen, it'll get scaled up and make everything inside it look pixelated, which is what we want. So we need the graphics of the volatile image. Graphics g equals vimage dot get graphics. Pretty simple stuff. Um, uh, now here at the end of the loop, we're going to say g dot dispose, which is all, which is normal. Um, so here's where we'd render all the stuff. For right now, let's just uh, say g dot set color, color dot uh, black g dot fill rect. We want it to be zero and zero, which is the upper left corner, and the width and height should be game width and game height. Okay. Game width and game height. Yes, like this. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, here, uh, after that, we're going to uh, you know do our I was going to say render stuff. We'll fill that in later. After we've disposed of the graphics object, we're going to go ahead and assign it to something uh, else. We're going to say that g equals canvas.getGraphics. Now we can draw our volatile image to the canvas. And we do that by saying g.drawImage. Uh, get rid of all of these, because that's way more parameters than we actually need. Our parameter is going to be the image we want to draw, which is vImage. The upper left-hand corner of the image, which is the upper left-hand corner of the canvas, which is 0, 0. Um, and we want it to be uh, the width and height of the canvas. So we can say canvas width and canvas height, variables from earlier. Lastly, put in null. This is something called an image observer. Uh, I never use it. I have not yet encountered a situation where I need it. I'm not even sure what it is. Uh, so just put null there. Uh, and lastly, we want to dispose of these gra this graphics object. If we were to run this right now, we should get a perfectly black screen, and we do. Remember, before it was white. To prove that it's actually working, rather than setting it to black, um, set it to red. Right here, g.setColor, color.red, whenever we draw it. Now we've got this gigantic, bright red, eye-burning screen. Hooray for us. Um, here, if you want to demonstrate also that this is uh, how, how this is coming out pixelated, if we say g dot set color color dot red, let's change this one back to black so we've got a black background, um, and then we'll say g dot draw rect, uh, let's say 10, 10, 100, and 100. Um, this would ordinarily be a one pixel wide. Uh, a one pixel thick line drawn in a square shape um, because uh, in a 100 by 100 square shape um, the thing is since we're scaling it up uh, what we should end up with is a line that is um, like two or three pixels in thickness let's see what we've got yep uh, on my screen this is three pixels wide as you can see we've got that little pixelated effect if we were to go up here to the top and change our first game width and game height variables to let's say 200 and um, 150, and then we draw it. It's very, it's much more pixelated. You see, it's thicker. In fact, if we were to set this to be let's say uh, 110 by 110, because that's the smallest width that will still. Sorry about that. Uh, my screen recorder crashed. Um, 110 by 110 is the smallest width and height that will still fit on our screen. Um, that that will still fit the this image that we or this uh, rectangle that we drew onto our screen. So if we draw it right now, it's m extremely pixelated. We've got uh, let's see it's a one two. I can't. My eyes don't focus that close. I think it's like seven. I'm not sure. Seven pixels um, thickness on this line here. So, as you can see, that's how you can easily create the whole pixelated effect. I'm going to set this back to what we had it before. And so, that's what we got. Um, next time, uh, I'm not sure what we'll do next time. I'll figure it out. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.